Ladies and gents, welcome to the final broadcast, the final cast before the main event of Hidden Cup 5. Hidden Cup 5 is February 25th through March 3rd. The support has already been unreal, but if we were to break records and do crazy things, I'm going to need every one of you guys over those eight days. Uh, this here is a show match of players or featuring players who lost in the qualifier. Obviously, very, very good talents. And I don't know who is playing here. And they're using Hidden Cup 2 heroes. So heroes that are not being used in the main event of Hidden Cup 5 uh, to play this series. So we will get a taste of what it feels like to speculate on the players here today. Uh, we have El Cid playing as the Burgundians in the red. And then we have Italians from Subutai, which is a very unique pick um, for Gold Rush. In all honesty, this is not a pick I was expecting at all. Um, so Subutai against El Cid. We'll see how things end up playing out. Now, to make things a little bit more uh, speculative, so yesterday we had Margugu against Daniel, right? Now, Margugu, I thought for sure was fire, uh, even so much so that in the final game, the age up indicator was not in English, but it was in Portuguese, which then made everybody say, oh, this is absolutely a Portuguese, uh, you know, a Brazilian player, because this is in Portuguese, and, and made everyone think even more so, this must be fire. Turns out it was Margugu. It was a giant bluff. Yes, we have an emote for bluffing, and maybe there will be bluffing here today. But um, the kind of the funny thing about that is I made an image today, or, or you know, Hardy made an image for us for the possible players, and we removed Margugu and Daniel. And then Robo said, oh, no, keep them on the list. So I... I think Robo's having way too much fun with this, okay? This is supposed to be work to be an admin, and Robo's just having way too much fun with all this power already. He's power-hungry, people. Because now I'm thinking maybe this could be a Margugu versus Daniel rematch? Like, I guess I guess that's a possibility? Like, I, I don't know. That's, you know, worth, worth thinking about anyways as we watch our players here. Now, I think Burgundians are just top, top tier for this map. Uh, usually you're having some, you know, it's, it's a wall map. Usually it's quite boomy. Um, eco upgrades an age earlier is just insane. Italians, um, it is cheaper for them to go up to each age, which is nice. You know, the Genoese crossbow could be really, really strong, but it's just a little bit trickier, I think, at certain stages of the game with the Italians. But we'll see. Uh, map definitely seems a little bit more awkward here for Subutai just because of this gold. Uh, over here, for example, El Cid's gold is on the back. But then the stone is harder to take if you are El Cid. So that's kind of the main difference here. This stone could end up being really helpful for Subutai. And with Gold Rush, you're normally going to have some uh, some walls. Uh, be possible to, to take some of your gold. And then eventually, it's of course controlling the middle. So we'll see. Dark Moon says, I said it before, every show match is going to be Daniel and Margugu because they're the only ones with open schedules. I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Daniel's got a full-time job, man. The thing about Daniel that is interesting as a player, and I would be surprised, I think Robo's trolling. I don't think we're going to have Margugu and Daniel here. I think Robo is just tricking us, but Daniel, anytime there's a tourney, he plays, like, right away. Like, if we give a weak range of, you know, let's say, you know, Monday to Sunday, Daniel's contacting someone on Friday... And he's like, hey, do you want to play Saturday morning? Like, I don't know what it is about Daniel, but he always wants to play his tournament sets so much faster than everyone else. So maybe he would be someone who was like, hey, you want to play again tomorrow too? He'd just be like, yeah, let's do it. I'd be surprised. T90, are there prizes for guessing the caster? No, there's no prize for guessing the caster. What, there's a prize for having ears? For being able to hear? No, there's no there's no hidden caster. You know what could improve the quality of the show is if I put like a bag over my head. Maybe then it could add a little bit of mystery. And then people wouldn't, you know, see the mustache and run away screaming. This is a fast castle here from Subutai to start off this show match. And we want voice changers. <laughs> voice changers. That'd be funny. I mean, it'd be a horrible idea. It's funny to think about, but just horrible in practice. Almost as bad as, I don't know, having the first Hidden Cup not have hero names, but having their names be Hidden Cup 1, Hidden Cup 2, wait for it, 
Hidden Cup 3, Hidden Cup 4, Hidden Cup 5, Hidden Cup 6, Hidden Cup 7, Hidden Cup 8, Hidden Cup 9, Hidden Cup 10, Hidden Cup 11, Hidden Cup 12. And then, after a full day of casting, you're like, oh my god, remember that... Remember that game? Who was it? And you're like, oh, I think it was Hidden Cup 3. And then you're like, oh no, it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it was Hidden Cup 6. No, it was definitely... Maybe it was Hidden Cup 7. It was really confusing. Subutai almost lost this scout here. I don't think Subutai was expecting the Burgundian player to go Feudal Age. He was expecting more of a fast castle. Did get the walls down here nicely, though. And keeping the scout alive is really nice. There is a gap here. We'll see if anything gets built there. We'll also see if the fast castle is doable with this economy right now for Subutai. It feels like Subutai is going to need a bit more on wood. Going crazy on the goats right now. Kind of inefficient, honestly. But, I mean, there's also quite a few villagers on goats. Eco upgrades are going to fly in now for El Cid, though. Which is the beauty of going fast feudal. Then you just get the castle age eco upgrades faster. So this is just, just like... The thing with Burgundians is on a map where you can wall, you just cannot go wrong with them. You just can't. They're so good. Okay, any guesses so far, guys? Absolutely mental, says El Cid is MBL. He does the wall blocking too often. Well, this can't be MBL because MBL is a main event player. But that was a good try. Doubt versus Doubt. Okay, it cannot be Doubt versus Doubt because Doubt can't play himself. But also, Doubt is also a main event player. So it can't be him. Nice try. El Cid equals Vivi. Okay, Vivi is one of the possible players. I think we are too early for actual guesses, but I appreciate the energy. We've got someone saying Veleza. Okay. You think T90 is casting? I don't know. Uh, the mouse is currently working. I think if this was T90 casting, the mouse would run out of battery here. I'm so sorry about that yesterday, by the way. I did charge it. That was so embarrassing. Okay, ca uh, scouts are just fighting each other here. Blacksmith was missing. Not the end of the world, in my opinion. Losing the scout could be pretty brutal for, for whoever this could happen to. El Cid is just on top of it here. Now Subutai is probably never going to leave his base until he's in the next stage. Like, real... Okay, so closed map players, players who are really comfortable in closed map situations, they are going to save this scout and they're going to heal this up later. This is interesting. Subutai is luring his opponent away with the scout and sending two villagers here. And he's running through the middle, so usually the wolves are on the sides. This is going to be a, like a little siege forward or something. Or maybe we see a barracks in the middle. I could see maybe building buildings in the middle making sense here. This is unique. Remember, this is a player who played in the qualifier, so I'm trying to remember tendencies. That's a very interesting move there. I really like that. And of course, the scout's still alive as well. And knows the opponent's base is over here. We'll run into a wolf. Woo, 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 woo. And then, ooh, scout goes through for El Cid. And now El Cid cannot find out about this because the scout will be trapped in here. Fascinating stuff. Now, this is definitely a situation where what you don't see tells you enough if you're at the high level. So if El Cid doesn't see town centers going down, El Cid should know the wood is being spent in a different way. It's actually mining camp on gold and mining camp on gold. Okay, who would go for monks? Who would go for crazy monks from the players who could potentially play here? Uh, someone says Valis. That is a really good guess. Valis or Andy? Freaking Andy or Valis? My top two guesses right now. Yep. You guys are spot on. Andy and Valis are the two that I would think of. Also, Valis always plays in blue. These guys have chosen not to go for interesting colors here. Whereas yesterday, they were changing the color every game. El Cid, I, I don't know if the double mining camp tells you enough yet. El Cid is going to plan on going scouts eventually into light cap. But here's the spears and the siege and soon the monks. And we've got it all in play here. Right on top of that gold. And oh, that stable. The stable might actually be denied. This could be really awkward. I think this could be denied. This is a really nice position for Subutai. What a sneaky little play. So obviously it's early, but I, I am in agreement with my chat here. I think that freaking Andy Valis certainly would do something like this. 
Here comes the Manganel. Stable is at 90%. Is Red Doubt? Is it going to be a Doubt Stable? Oh my god, the Micro? What? Well, Villager dies anyways, but actually, El Cid was paying attention there. And unfortunately, paying attention does not mean the stable can complete, and that is a problem. We now have a stable behind here. And now the monk is there to convert that villager. That stable is denied. So, good aggression here from Subutai. Again, I don't really see Italians as a civilization, which excites me that much in a normal gold rush game. But this is not a normal gold rush game. This is an all-in here from Subutai so far. And El Cid, forced to drop stables behind here, just now getting the light cab upgrade, just now going to produce scouts. This is not the type of game the Burgundians want. Very well played from Subutai to gain this position. Also, the scout runs through to see everything. Wow, Subutai's playing insane! TC could go down pretty quickly. There's no siege out here to kill this, guys. But you would need your own siege. It's three mangonels already. It's gonna be three monasteries. <laughs> This is definitely a player who likes arena style. The timing on these attacks is just ridiculous right now. It feels like this is Celt Siege. You know, how fast all this, this stuff is going down, but it's just the timings of it. All right. I'm definitely getting some Finnish vibes from Subutai. I, I don't know what it is. Definitely feeling, feeling Finn over here. And maybe Veleza. Instead of Valis. Valeza definitely is, is a player who can occasionally go for these types of plays. Was a player who players everyone thought was going to be in the main event of Hidden Cup. We've got Redemption now coming in for El Cid. Maybe the one thing that could save him. Redemption against these uh, Manganels. In 8 seconds that will pop. There's no Sanctity though. So the Siege can actually kill this monk. And the TC is going to go down. And this could be brutal. The Siege will be converted. It won't be. And disaster for El Cid to start off the show match. And whoever this Subutai player is has just shot out of a cannon here to start off the day. Wow. Crazy. It just comes down to the lack of scouting from El Cid as well. It was so unique how Subutai was able to get to this position and just distract the opponent. Villagers are now rushing, which of course is not great, especially when you don't have a town center to produce more. Subutai is now going to convert villagers and kill villagers, and well, El Cid is dead. That was domination here from Subutai, and speculate away on who you think this might be. But Subutai takes the first win, and that was a very fast gold rush game. Man, that was so cool. Like, I almost want to do like a breakdown on this. Separately, we don't have the time with main event of Hidden Cup coming up. But, like, this was a conscious decision, all stemming on this scout fight. So they take the scout fight. Blue scout is weaker then. Uh, let's watch this from Red's point of view, right? So Red's, like, on top of him this whole time. Red sees the scout. And there goes the scout this way. And Red is the stronger scout. So Red says, okay, I will chase. And there go the Vils. This was super smart. And I don't know if there's many players on the list who would really do something like this, too. So to start off the show match, I'm immediately, like, narrowing in on three particular players. But, hey, listen, don't listen to me because uh, I said that someone was fire yesterday and, and got that one wrong. Um, so, again, those are the possible players today. Capoch, Freakin' Andy, Classic Pro, Kingston, Daniel, Margugu, Dark, Vallis, Dogal, Veleza, Fire, and Vivi. And I would say... For Subutai, with that play, I'm already leaning towards Freakin' Andy, Valis, Veleza, or Dark. Those four. Because that was very unique. Especially for Gold, Gold Rush, especially with Italians. Not, to, not sure on El Cid yet, to be honest with you. I don't think there was enough indicators there. All right, folks, uh, we're catching up to live time here on Cup, and I have no mods because the game wouldn't work because one of my mods, and obviously there was no issue with the mods in any of the other games, but there was an issue now, so I'm sorry about that. We've got Subutai here who won the first game in the blue. He's playing as the Armenians, and then here in the red, we have El Cid. This map is called Cup. We are catching up to live time, and I did not have enough coffee this morning for this cast, but I hope you're enjoying it so far. Byzantines against Armenians. We've got some big old trees, and we've got some great late-game civilizations here. And both players have opted to dock on the bigger water area, uncup, which means they are more exposed towards the middle. 
double dock right now here for El Cid. So clearly El Cid going to go for a lot of water control with the Byzantine fires. And then over on the other side, Subutai is going fast castle. Whoa, and we're at live time. Okay, so Subutai is going to lose his fish. Okay, prediction, prediction. This is fast castle, all in monks again from Subutai. Right? You're Armenians? When you build a fortified church, you get a relic instantly. And then um, you you can make the, the um, what are they called? The freaking warrior priests. And it would make a lot of sense on a fast castle. I, and then monks can also convert ships. Yeah, this is going to be fast castle monks here from Subutai. What in the world? Usually it's like players will go for water. Players will adapt, you know, add some farms, add some land army. Like right now, El Cid might be thinking archers or something. But this feels like a fast castle into monks or Subutai. That would actually make a lot of sense here. Look at how the mule cart is being utilized as well. Taking the wood and the gold at the same time. Hmm. T90, please turn on small trees. Brown ninja, you need to chill my butt, my friend. The game was not working, okay? Embrace the trunkage. Embrace it, okay? This is what real trees look like. They're very pretty, all right? You got really upset. And I'm doing, I'm being mean now. I'm sorry, but yeah, I just, the game wasn't working, so we had to remove mods. I thought it was, I thought it was clear. But maybe you were doing ninja things and didn't hear my reasoning. Hmm. So, fishing ships are being added behind this for El Cid. Res collected should be pretty good. We even have another dock here for El Cid. And El Cid is walling up. Now, this is what a lot of players tend to do on this map, but we don't see cup... I mean, when's the last time you guys saw a game on Cup? It's been a really long time. This is a hidden Cup map. Maybe were the occasional games that would happen. Some show matches or something over the years. But yeah. And here come two villagers from Subutai. This is going to be a church rush. As Subutai did it in the first game. And now we got it in the second game. I mean, this is definitely Valis, Andy, or Veleza, right? Maybe Dark. And there is the fortified church on the amphibious terrain. I would add a dock right now if I were El Cid. Maybe make some demos. I will say that El Cid's eco balance is a little bit all over the place. El Cid sees this, is bringing an archer, is looking to rush this down. Is this too bold from Subutai? Keep in mind, Subutai does not have fishing ships. We've got a tower now. I, I like the idea of a tower here. Now, the fortified church does fire arrows. But it doesn't actually fire that many arrows. And I think players are starting to realize that. And Warrior Priest is on the way. That tower is going to go up next to these churches, though. And it will make it awkward for the Warrior Priest and the Monks. While meanwhile, behind us, like, we've got some army out here from El Cid. We've got fishing ships. What is this? <laughs> what is this, man? This is so, so unique. Fortified church is the same as a monastery. It's just with the Armenians, you can make the warrior priest. So it's a monk that can't convert, but it can attack. It is very strong. It has 11 base attack. So it would be amazing. Um, it, it struggles with like armor, for example, but still it can be amazing if you get into the opponent's base. El Cid has really struggled with balance here. I actually think I have a tell for El Cid already, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold tight to it. I don't want to sway you guys too much. A scout here. Hoping to stop the next fortified church. And these archers hoping to take out these fortif these warrior priests. The thing is, they can heal each other up. I don't know if you want to be underneath the TC, though. Still, El Cid needs to click up to the next age here. El Cid still has not done so. And El Cid, of course, doesn't know the opponent. El Cid probably feels a little flexed on at the moment. Like, what is this strategy? This is crazy. But I don't know, like the fortified churches and the priests haven't really accomplished that much yet. It's been harassment, but there's still all those fishing ships working and this has not progressed to something more yet. Hmm. There now is a siege workshop. Now, obviously once the siege comes out, this could be a different situation. Oh God, there is a demo being made out of that dock. Subutai has to be really careful. Again, I like how El Cid isn't that worried about the arrow fire from these uh, churches right now. 
Seems difficult to micro, though. They didn't go the Warrior Priest. The Warrior Priests are going to run right underneath the TC. There's no Vils there. Warrior Priest in the eco. Okay. This is a little unique. Quick walling against priests is not something I thought I'd be saying today. Nice job from El Cid not to take much damage. And this is definitely getting awkward. Subutai's making a ram now. We have a tower because it seems like there's panic. And by the way, guys, Subutai's researching infantry upgrades, which applies to these priests. A very big reason why the archers stopped accomplishing as much. This is a, the rare warrior priest rush. And double tower from El Cid. I mean, I like that. Just add some extra levels of resistance to make sure this doesn't get too bad for you. I think these things got hit by a demo here, guys. I think we missed it. Bit of a T90 blinds moment. The fires for the Byzantines will finish off some of these. So that's actually really nice for El Cid. El Cid still killing these warrior priests. The economy is still not pretty for Subutai back at home. And finally, El Cid makes it to Castle Age. And El Cid made it to Castle Age at a really reasonable time, too. 20 minutes is somewhat normal. It's just that this was so unbelievably fast here from Subutai. The archers will be stronger here in a moment. Units need to be upgraded. We'll probably see some siege mixed in from El Cid as well to be able to take out the rams. And it's not pretty, but I think El Cid is held on here. And as long as there's not many more losses here, El Cid might be able to stabilize here in a moment. Really nice shot from El Cid to survive this because this could have gotten out of hand really fast. Also, this dock, by the way, I think has helped so, so much. The fishing ships have just been dropping off food over there. And really nice to be out of harm's way with that. I could have sworn that the crossbow upgrade was coming in at, at one point. Must have been canceled so El Cid could get other upgrades. And now Sid's going to drop the second TC behind this. Does have Siege and Defense. Does also have the Towers here. And it doesn't feel like Subutai can really advance much further. Hmm. All right. So, oh, the you're right. I think the Archer range with the Crossbow upgrade might have gone down. I think that might explain what happened there. So, the Warrior Priest may dive for this Manganel here. So, Subutai can go for the kill. This is crazy. This is crazy, man. Fully armored warrior priest in Castle Age underneath the TC. El Cid is completely distracted right now. And El Cid is getting... It, it just doesn't know what what's hit him here. Did micro down the rams with some vills. But man, these warrior priests are doing so much. And there's 10 of them. And there's still siege as well. And this TC is going to be denied. This is brutal. I thought El Cid was maybe okay. But now the losses are starting to add up. And the idle time is ridiculous. We are 23 minutes into this game, and there's been over an hour of idle time for El Cid. Just in and out of TCs all the time. I wonder if El Cid knows who he's up against right now. Because, like, the players aren't told who they're up against in these show matches either. They're supposed to guess at the end. But I bet you El Cid, who's clearly more of a meta player, is just like, Oh, God, Robo put me up against a clown, you know? Who's monk rushing me? Who is this guy? Why did I say yes to this show match? And everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong for El Cid. Both wood lines were hit. TC was delayed. Crossbow upgrade was denied. And honestly, at this point, you look back at this eco. I don't know what these farms are here, Subutai. Not that I could really speak to them, but... I, honestly, this is looking a bit better than what we have for El Cid. Sure, El Cid's got fishing ships. But it's 31 eco against 33 right now. And this this could all still continue to get out of hand very quickly. Is this new meta, guys? I actually think this might be something we see in the main event. It seems really strong on a map where there's where you can just use the... Like you're so close, you could use monks to convert the navy too? I don't know, man. Like, there might be some main event players right now who are like, man, I want to try this strategy. My guess right now for El Cid is a bit shakier. But I think Subutai has not tried to hide their preferences at all in strategy. Has really played uniquely here. I think either freaking Andy, Dark, Beleza, or Valis. I have it narrowed down to those four. Those are the four on the list, I think, that would have the tendency to go for these types of plays. 
There's only so many players who love their, their crazy all-in monk plays. I think maybe Andy top of the list. Andy and Val is probably a top two there. I've seen Dark do some crazy things. I think you guys will probably underrate his monk play. Because you guys maybe haven't seen it as much. As Dark hasn't maybe accomplished as much as the others I mentioned. Mm, still wondering where this game goes from here. This has been a very unique one here. And El Cid is not finished. El Cid's still in the game. He still has a similar eco count now. And he's still alive. And he is Byzantines. From here, it feels like we are... <laughs> we are about to see a three ram warrior priest in the ram push. And villagers are coming in as well. What? <laughs> yeah, is this you pudding? <laughs> Is you putting in the freaking show match here, Robo? What is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh. I mean, <laughs> this is wild, dude. And it's against Byzantines, so the Byzantines can see stuff coming from a mile away. So El Cid's probably like, what? What's happening? Nice defense there. And then choo choo. <laughs> Well, okay, so here's where it gets awkward for El Cid. El Cid always needs walls in front because the warrior priest can hop out and they could snipe the siege. So if the walls are in front, oh God. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Those are some big hits. Okay, the choo-choo has is, is been denied. Like the rams have gone down or will go down, but this is what I meant about the warrior priest. They could dive in to take the siege. And then you've got all these warrior priests in your eco. We've got Vils walking in. Is this Huang? What is it? A wh what? Who is this player, man? This is insane. More warrior priests on the way. There's 21 of them. And I think we are somehow encountering a new meta here with the Armenians. And the GG's called. 44 warrior priests created. A fast castle here on Cup. And again, who is this player? We do not know. That was just crazy. And I feel really bad for El Cid. Like, El Cid has had two games now where El Cid wants to go to Feudal Age and, you know, just um, just kind of chill and adapt. And suddenly the opponent's in Castle Age with Monks in Game 1 and now Warrior Priest in Game Number 2. Wow, that is some unique play. Um, you know, it's a shame that none of these players can play in the main event because I, I want to find out who Subutai is right now. And then I would love to not only find out who he is right now, I want to like rig it, send him into the main event. So if we see that, we can say such and such confirmed, right? All right, so game three, and we have had non-stop monk rushes so far from Subutai in this Hidden Cup show match. And we've got Tootins on Arabia now from Subutai. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. I mean... Listen, Teutons aren't the worst Arabia Civ ever if you play standard. They're, they're pretty solid. You can play in the scouts and play in the knights. But now I just see Teutons and I just think, this guy got to go monks again? Who would go Teutons on Arabia? Now, maybe some other civilizations are planned for future maps. But right now, this is going to be a very quick show match if El Cid doesn't turn it around. So El Cid, let's turn it around here, please. We want more games. It's a... Uh... You know, ideally, we would get like six or seven games here today. That's the goal. So it's Malians for El Cid. And El Cid has played like an Arabia player so far. Just goes to Feudal Age, adapts a little bit. But unfortunately, he's gotten killed in Castle Age. I think this is a map where you can't easily do the Fast Castle approach. Um, But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Gold's pretty exposed. Stone's pretty exposed here for Super Tight. Wood is, and berries are just incredible, though. Like, really easy walls. So I could easily see something like scouts happen here. But Teutons against the Malians? I would prefer the Malians, but I actually think Teutons are pretty good in this matchup if the game goes late. Because um, I think where Teutons really struggle is if the opponent has lots of mobility, which the Malians do have. But also, uh, good Cav Archers is really the one thing on an Arabia-style map that the Teutons struggle against. The Malians do not really have good Cav Archers. So I could see knights and monks and pikemen and maybe some gunpowder and then those crazy Teutonic knights later on possibly playing a role in this matchup. So deer being pushed in. I'm expecting fast feudal age into something like scouts here would make sense for both players. 
And again, not too much else to talk about right now. Thank you so much, Farland. Uh, says, can't take it back. Chat is all that matters, especially the VIPs. Uh, Farland, who is a VIP, is now, is basically bragging right now with a donation that he is a VIP. This is, this is very non-VIP of you to brag and rub it in other people's faces. Okay, VIP, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pax, for the 51 gifted subs, which is unbelievable. Thank you so much, Pax, for everything. Speaking of VIPs, I don't know if Pax is a VIP. I gotta look at the list, but, uh, Pax is certainly getting there. This has been good. Guys, I encourage you, if you're in the Discord, to please give us emote ideas for the main event of Hidden Cup. We will be adding a lot. Um, we have a channel for that now. So, you know, if you're already a sub, or maybe you'll just get lucky, get a gifted sub at some point. I know... I, I don't know the, pers the, the, like, motivation behind people's subscriptions, right? I'd like to believe that at least, like, half the motivation beyond subscribing is just, like, supporting the content. But it might be like 99% for the emotes. So if it's 99% for the emotes, really care, it, it really matters for you, and you have some fun ideas, uh, you know, just mention it. I can't make promises that I'll actually do it, of course. But ideas aren't going to hurt. For example, we have the T90 Who emote. So if a player is really confusing, like El Cid right now, I'm completely in the dark on. I, have, I do not have enough information. I do not have enough tells from El Cid. So... T90 who probably has some relevance there. Um, you know, the bluff emote, which we have, applied to Margugu yesterday. I don't think Subutai is bluffing at all here, though. Like, Subutai, if anything, is leaning towards whatever identity they feel they are comfortable with, more than most players tend to. And uh, we also have the confirmed emote, which, of course, is anytime you see something that you feel is relevant for a player, such and such confirmed. We're getting pretty close to freaking Andy confirmed over here from Subutai. <laughs> we'll see. Again, Andy or Valis. I actually think the Arabia game will tell us a lot because I would consider Valis to be a slightly more capable Arabia player than someone like Andy. But man, oh man, were some of these strategies extreme. All right, so 18 pop up here from El Cid. El Cid definitely going for the scout build. We thought could happen here. Really fast uptime, actually. A little rare to see double lumber camp on the 18 pop. It normally means your stable is going to be delayed. Um, well, it looks like that might be a bit delayed here for El Cid. So not the cleanest build I've ever seen. And then we've got two militia behind this from Subutai. And lots of walls. So this is going to be, the, this build order is called the Frush, the French Drush. We only have one French player this could be here today. And that is Margugu, but Margugu did play yesterday. Uh, it is possible though, Robo said it is possible that Daniel and Margugu could be playing today as well. El Cid is angry and wants to stop those walls. Will not stop the walls, but here comes the sneaky little militia play. Hmm. Uh, there's a stable from El Cid, to be expected. El Cid really wants to stop these walls. There's a lot of them. This villager's still standing here idle as well. And there's not going to be a big follow-up for Subutai. It just definitely feels like Subutai wants to defend. Wall up and not be broken, and then maybe get to Castlage at some point. I do think El Cid might have caught a glimpse at what was happening. Isn't completely walled, though. It's still quite open, and a scout and two militia could still kill villagers here. This could be really strong when you have the Feudal Age Scout with two Militia. It could lead to some Villager kills. And Quick Walls from El Cid! Viper confirmed! Well played. And Villagers are still pretty efficient as well over here. Trying his best to deny the walls, but there's a Spearman there already from Subutai. I think Subutai will be pretty happy with how things have gone. Teutons have really cheap farms. And you are likely going to be walled up and farming away shortly. If you are Subutai, which is what Subutai wanted to do here. Someone says, I actually think El Cid is Andy. Hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do not know about El Cid. Like, I could definitely see El Cid being someone like uh, Dogal. Um, someone like Fire. I don't know why I'm always leaning towards the Brazilians, but... They love their, like, Feudal Age builds, and they really struggle against, like, the all-in style. Um, 
Could be someone... I, I doubt it's someone like Vivi. I think Vivi has a little bit more scrappiness to his play in messy situations. Could be Kingston. Yeah, Kingston's a decent guess from the list. It's, it's tough to say, but we've got these two scouts in here from El Cid. We'll see how nerdy El Cid is with these scouts, right? Because certain players are just going to micro these scouts for the next 10 minutes. Behind this, we have an archery range from El Cid. So El Cid does not have near the farming eco that Subutai does. And Subutai has just played really, really safe. Red could also be dark. Yep, yep. I mean, honestly, there's. it's hard for me to look at El Cid and say it can't be anyone on the list. Maybe, maybe you know, you, you have to look at the, the execution to a certain extent. But we just haven't seen a normal... We haven't seen a game go on long yet to really pick up on cues. We've got a Spearman there poking down the scout from Subutai. Ooh, a gate there from Subutai to stop those scouts from moving through. So now it's just one scout from Elsit. And there are those Tutan farms. Good stuff. Got an early tower here from Subutai. So Subutai actually scouted the range and the gold being mined. I, I'm really impressed with Subutai's awareness of the situation. A lot of times players play greedy like this, but they don't know what the follow-up is. But here, the early tower is because of the range follow-up. And there could still be other vulnerabilities, like maybe the archers could break through over here. But it just really feels like Subutai is set up in a nice position to maybe head to Castle Age and make something like Knights. Hmm. People said it's not Daniel. Okay, so who who is El Cid not, chat? Who are you you convinced it is not of from the list? Hera, well, obviously, because he's in the main event and there's, you know, no main event players here. Okay, not Vivi. It's not Andy. It's not Veleza. Okay. It's not me. That's just true. It's not me. Confirmed. It's not Margugu. It's not Veleza. Okay. And it's not Capoch. I actually... I think El Cid could very much be Capoch. I see a lot of Capoch tendencies with El Cid. That was what I was thinking in the previous game. And El Subutai with a quick wall and a scout kill there. Hmm. Subutai's feeling it. Subutai's having fun. This hidden show match is bringing Subutai to life. I, okay, if I had to bet, I mean, if I, if someone handed me $7.9 trillion and I had to bet it all right now on two players, I'm going Capoch against Andy. Capoch is El Cid against freaking Andy Subutai. That's my thought. Again, if, you know, and if someone has $7.9 trillion they would like to pass along, we can maybe try and replicate this. Uh, I'm not going to complain about that. In fact, I would love to maybe have 1% of that go towards the prize pool for the main event. That would be really cool. You know, if you're down. Don't want to be too greedy or anything. Look at these walls. Huh. Okay. Well... Next stage will be in for Subutai. Obviously, Subutai built a tower. So Subutai will not be able to build a second TC. And there's the second stable. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see the stone purchase, though, from the market that was built. This is a very Andy situation with the early market, in my opinion. Some players love to have that market for flexibility. El Cid did sell stone to have a competitive uptime. Doesn't really have the biggest archer mass. Has the ability to make camels with archers, though. And yeah, I think we're going to see both players just buy back their stone at some point to build TCs. Hmm. Someone offered me Monopoly dollars. Oh, well, that's nice of you. That's better than nothing. It's the thought that counts, right? And we are going to see double stable knights here from Subutai. Subutai went monks for every single game. We'll see if there's more monks here. Double stable and then instant monastery. This is pretty textbook stuff. If camels come out, you now have the tool to convert the camels. You can now heal up your weak knights. Start to grab those relics. This is just a random militia hanging out. And here comes El Cid. 
and El Cid. I, I feel like you always have to expect a double stable knights. He might. It is interesting he's coming forward. It doesn't feel like the timing's necessarily the best for El Cid if these knights actually find him. But there's no scouting yet. Four knights could actually put a stop to this, I think. Nice scouting from El Cid. Now crossbows in. And Subutai, who's been sitting behind these walls. Might be a little concerned seeing crossbows. And then waiting for six knights. Again, Teutons do not have husbandry. So you don't really have the speed to catch up here. This is going to be a really big attack, though. Six knights and a monk here. And El Cid went in there with the scout. I really like the scouting and saw double stable. So the siege actually does not offer anything against the military Subutai is making. This is an easy trap to fall into. The camels do. So you, if there's more camels forward here, it could be nice. And then, of course, when you're up against Teutons, it's really tough to get conversions, too, because they resist conversion. But what the tower, uh, sorry, what the siege could do, rather, is pressure the tower to take the opponent off of gold. That is a lot more knights than El Cid was expecting, but we had a nice attack rounds here from El Cid with the siege. So that's something. The knights are trying to surround. There's also a monk behind to get conversions. The siege goes down. And to me, it feels like the fight is going pretty well for Subutai. I mean, these are two knights. They have the extra armor. The crossbows are taken out of the picture. The monk here is actually going to survive. And yeah, I think Subutai can realistically just come back home, heal up these knights, and slowly take out these buildings. That was not a, too bad an engagement. The problem, and you can see now that the weak knights are being pulled home. The problem when going crossbow camel is it's tough to get the upgrades on everything. So we didn't see bod canero for the crossbows, and we didn't even see bloodlines for the for the camels, for example. Whereas if you look at the player who went straight knights, bloodlines in, armor in, attack in, and then a monk or two helps with a conversion, and it just really can swing the fights nicely. I was very well played there from Subutai. Subutai played so aggressive, but hid the fact that there was aggression happening. I, obviously, you saw two stables, but the player wasn't moving out at all. I think El Cid was like, oh, this guy's just playing defensive. Probably thinking it's more of an arena player because of the first two games. Hmm. Someone says, in case anyone is wondering, you'd have to buy 30... Sorry. 383.86 million copies of Monopoly to have 7.9 trillion in Monopoly money. Hey, uh, salutes in chat, please, for Poppin' Fresh for giving us that info. That has made my day better. Thank you. Hmm. Two TCs here for El Cid. Pretty good eco upgrades. We've got the third TC now. Really nice to have that gold in the back. And these knights, if they don't break through, they're not really offering too much right now to Subutai. Also, a scout came forward from El Cid and sniped a monk, which is really creative play. And does need to make sure that the opponent doesn't break through. And that's going to be the case. And there's a nice little vill lead now for El Cid. Who's still playing in towards Camel. Still playing in towards Crossbows as well, which I think is going to be problematic. And Eco's still pretty fragile. Like, 14 Teuton Knights is no joke right now. If this, if the walls are busted down, the Teuton Knights are going to destroy everything. It does feel like if El Cid can just hold, this could be good. Now, this is where having built that Monastery forward is a bit of a problem. Now you need one at home, and this main gold could be a problem. Subutai loves to have some monks mixed in, doesn't he? <laughs> it's crazy. He pulled that monk back, too. And these knights might be through in a second. High-pressure stuff. It's going to be very difficult to have the resources to make many camels right now if you're El Cid. On three TCs, all that food is going in towards villagers. Oh, Lightcap snipes the monk, though. Great defense from El Cid. Crossbows are still getting some hits here. More camels are being massed. More villagers are repairing. That Lightcap was clutch. Even the Lightcap upgrade was fantastic. There will also be a monk here in a second. The stable needs to be held. 15 villager lead for El Cid. The crossbow's still firing away, and Subutai won't have the siege just yet. And it feels like El Cid has just barely held on enough. And we're going to see, once the conversion starts... Subutai back away, at least for a moment. Look at Subutai pull the weak knights away, though. Waiting for a monk. That is sick. All these weak knights have been pulled away. And yeah, as expected. That is so many knights, though. He's he's all in here, guys. 
Got 20 knights. Like, those 20 knights will completely wreck the army that El Cid has. No bloodlines on the camels. No armor on the camels. Both those upgrades need to come in, and then it could be reasonable. But the thing is, there's always going to be monks to heal for Subatai. And there's always going to be monks for conversions. And now we have the plus two armor as well. Like, this is no joke. Does Subatai have somewhere to be? Every game, Subatai is trying to speed run <laughs> and win the game as fast as possible. <laughs> all in one TC. The first two games. Now the third game, all in one TC as well. <laughs> Crazy. The stable's going to go down. I just feel really bad for El Cid. El Cid's got to make more buildings now. El Cid has just been completely overrun. And the unit control is so good from Subutai. Subutai's making no mistakes. Converts a camel. The siege is always hitting the right positions. This is crazy. I actually... I'm thinking this might be... I'm leaning a little bit more towards Dark right now than I am Andy, believe it or not. What do you guys think? I think Andy would have more TCs. I don't know. Big attack here. Like we said, I really think that the army is not good enough for El Cid. Obviously, you don't want to fight against camels if you've got knights. You don't want to lose your snowball here if you're Subutai. Subutai figures I, I could just start tearing down TCs, so I'll just be patient. But this push from Subutai, as he's up 2-0 here, is looking amazing. He's even going to mix in pikes. Dropping more houses here. Camel upgrades are coming in, bloodlines and armor. But you then need an answer to the monks. And the crossbows come out to be an answer to the monks. It was a sneaky play out of the TC. Subutai has to respect that possibility now. We'll see if the crossbows choose to do that. If they choose to come out to try and take these monks, they're still the siege. Armor and bloodlines is going to come in. There go the crossbows. Interesting micro. This is really intense stuff. Subutai needing some patience here. Not to overextend. Behind by 20 villagers. Just one town center. This is three town centers for El Cid, who's now getting Bodkin Arrow, which wasn't in before for the crossbows. Snipes a monk. Beautiful play from El Cid. Man, that was some high level stuff right there. You could try that and regret it. Seems like maybe El Cid could start to pick off the reinforcements here. But if that is attempted, then the villagers will go down. The crossbows again go in and kill the monks, though. A great fight for El Cid, I think. And El Cid's micro looking better and better here. And he is simply just going to try and pick off the reinforcements. It's a smart play. Losing this TC would be horrible. But look at the micro here from El Cid. Great dodging. Here, the camels are getting a really nice fight in. This TC and and the the crossbows around and killing the siege is excellent for defense. And El Cid stops the push from killing him. Wow. I I mean, honestly, because of how this series has gone, I was fully expecting Subutai to just win this game. That micro from El Cid came out of nowhere. That was ridiculous defense. And now Camel Crossbow is looking so much better than it was before, isn't it? Never really thought the crossbows were going to play a role, but he just kept creating them. He kept them alive. Eventually got his camel upgrades. And now behind this, you're sitting at one TC eco if you're Subutai. You feel like you need something more, and, and he's singing villagers forward right now. But if El Cid just keeps up the numbers, keeps producing out of these TCs, the lead will just continue to grow. Only lost seven villagers. Here come villagers for a forward castle from Subutai. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Is this about to be doubt confirmed? <laughs> oh, man, dude. This could be... Oh, this is going to be a crazy fight. This is going to be nuts. Both players healing up and waiting. The fight's going to go down right on the front here. El Cid's golds are super far forward here. He's actually soon going to run... Well, no, he's still got this gold, but... Losing this area could be brutal. That's a lot of knights. There's 26 of them. And there's pikes. And there's siege. I think this castle can go up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Subutai is dropping a castle right on his face. El Cid is probably like, are you kidding me here? Now he's got to use these crossbows effectively and dodge the siege. He does 
dodge the siege. His camels are getting a good fight. He uses the siege against his opponent's siege. But guys, there is a problem here. And the problem is that even though El Cid is going to win the fight, this castle is going to go up. The crossbows and the camels are trying to focus down the vills. This is close. This is close. It's an 85%. It's an 88%. Villagers are starting to die. It's a 95, 96, 98. And it goes up. It is not doubt confirmed. We knew that. He's in the main event, right? It was incredibly close. And now what do you do? Like, okay, you have a massive eco lead, but you have a Teuton castle on your face. You're probably going to lose this TC. This could get so much worse for you. It, it, Subutai's pressure has been unreal. You have to somehow avoid this. I think you could think about maybe ramming it down if it's another Civ, but against Teutons, that's unlikely to happen. And El Cid says, I know what I'll do. I'll go to the Imperial Age. Excuse me, El Cid? That's crazy. Castle on his face, not really panicking, able to settle down. And he wants a castle probably for Trebs then. He is running villagers here. Where is he going? Does he see anything? Mm, I think he might mine this stone, honestly. Could maybe buy a castle soon. You know, I'm concerned the castle might not go up, right? Like, if he wants a castle, he has to buy more stone than he can afford right now. So it's going to take some time, and there's still going to be army from Subatai, and Subatai, he's going to be in a position to maybe deny that castle. These villagers finding this stone, though, is huge. That's some neutral stone that he found earlier. 40 villager lead for El Cid. Ballistics now on the way. Sick play from El Cid. I thought El Cid was completely dead here. Okay, this is Choo Choo number two. Choo-choo! Here comes some pikemen and some rams. Just gonna take out some houses. These villagers on stone going to be found by the knights. Villagers quick wall there. Ooh, nice quick walls from El Cid. All of a sudden, I'm getting Vivi vibes from El Cid. Which I wasn't getting in the first two games. But again, we didn't really get to see a normal game from El Cid yet. El Cid has looked really good on Arabia. Could get chemistry quickly with the Malians to maybe make some cannons, which might be the thinking now. Outposts around here just for vision. We've got a castle on the right side from El Cid. I didn't even realize El Cid was over here. And that castle is going to go up, most likely. I don't think Subutai sees that right now. Subutai could have denied that if Subutai noticed it, but it seems like it's halfway. Would take some time to get there. Imp is in for El Cid, despite the forward castle on his face. Beautiful play from him. Does click chemistry. He'll definitely be planning for Bombard Cannons. Doesn't really need more army than what is currently out there. Feels like the camels and the crossbows can hold against Subutai. And Subutai, who's been so aggressive, is just, unfortunately, too far behind economically. Now, the Treb would sit right around here. That is still an area where the Treb could get sniped. So El Cid might need some patience here. You don't want your first trebuchet to get sniped. That can really slow down the snowball. And the camels are maybe going to be pulled over here because of this. But honestly, if Subutai sees the camels over here, Subutai should dive with the knights. It feels weird to say should in these situations because it is such a messy game, but that is the game sense you would expect from the player at this level. There's the trap. Camels are there to protect it. I mean, you have nothing else to lose if you're Subutite. Like, you're su you're not even up to Imp yet. So I think you just gotta stop this. You, you have to take the fight, even if it's awkward. You really have no choice. And more villagers coming this way. Are we about to see another forward castle? Maybe here? Yeah, definitely planning for a fight here. And you see where the knights are going? This is perfect game sense. They oh, okay. You're protecting your trebs, huh? Well then, well, here I go into your base. And guess what? There's nothing here. <laughs> There's nothing here. Guys, I think Subutai can win this game. Look at the camels. El Cid is like, oh crap. <laughs> I, I, what? Subutai. Is Subutai got a castle in his base? <laughs> Subutai is trying to get some vision in here. And he's just going to commit 
more to this. Remember, these camels do not have imp upgrades against pikes. Monks could be problematic. Camels will kill the monks, though. Nice fight there for El Cid. Still, though, has to get out of here with these camels. El Cid is struggling. Does pull back towards the crossbows. Does pull back towards the traps. Here go the villagers wandering through. This game is so messy, man. This whole series has been so fun to watch so far. A couple knights found some villager picks over here. El Cid's eco is just... For a player who has the villager lead, it is a wreck right now. And it is because of things like this. We have another castle from Subatai. So he's repairing this castle. And he is building another forward castle. El Cid, no gold at the moment. Now, this is the gold that he'll need to collect. But he has no gold. Subutai is going to actually pressure the right side with some siege, apparently. Now, once this castle's down, this gold could be accessible again for Subutai. But that's a lot of knights. And I'm not convinced that these knights can be killed by anything if El Cid doesn't have gold. I think these knights can kill 20 villagers. Which is what he needs to even it up right now. I think they could take out TCs, even. God, this must be so annoying. Anyone else feel bad for El Cid right now? I mean... I, I, <laughs> he's trying. <laughs> he's getting raided everywhere. This is unbelievable. I also love this. El Cid just casually outposting near the opponent's eco. But knights are taking out this TC and El Cid is completely falling apart. At the same time though, the castle's gone down. The next castles could go down. El Cid's actually taking a really good fight. Can maybe get access to gold again. Buying stone maybe to drop more TCs everywhere. And now we've got knights over here as well. There has never been a better time to research Tigui for a Malian player in the history of Age of Empires. Like, if you could get Tigui now and your TCs fire at arrows when you're not garrisoned, that can actually be very helpful because you need something more. Look at this. Is this Vivi? It, what is this crap, dude? Subatai is ramming down the TC. He's raiding this TC. El Cid back on gold. Over here, El Cid held on. But needs to, to take out this castle. And this castle will get taken out, finally. Subatai still cast Lage. Let's remember that. Now, Subatai has spent a lot on a lot of stone and a lot of gold on this army. If this army goes down, I don't know if he'll be able to make a whole lot more. Obviously, you know, the raids have just been insane. But the TCs with Bodkinero and Chemistry are doing enough against the Knights. Like, the Knights can't actually stay underneath the TCs all that long unless there is a lot of them. And now we have Siege Workshop number three. <laughs> forward from from Subutai. <laughs> Subutai is cracking me up, dude. <laughs> Subutai is cracking me up. This is so funny. Poor El Cid. He's got like two on food right now. Look at all these farms that don't have farmers anymore. So much eco has had to be abandoned. Camels. Well, maybe need to like this. One of these sides needs to be dealt with. I think you just deal with this side. And you don't forget about these villagers over here, but... Okay, new TC. All right. It looks stupid, but it's actually smart. You need a new TC around farms. You need a mill around farms. That's really good. Guys, it's just... Subutai has made this so messy. And I actually think Subutai is going to win this game. I mean, this is... It seems like El Cid just can't put out all these fires. There's just not enough army to go around. All right, the camels are going to go over here. That'll be a decent fight. These camels have to come over here. He just can't make more. And he's actually hit a point now where he can't actually produce villagers, too. Like, there he was just out of the TC, killed the ram, and back in the TC. That's crazy. Like he's doing a lot of things. But can he stabilize this game? This is a wild one. I would love to see maybe Subutai focus on getting some relics. Maybe expanding the eco. Like, two TCs is great, but like, four TCs with an all-in castle age feels a lot more reasonable. Again, eventually, you we might actually see a situation where Subutai doesn't have gold anymore in Castle Age. Like, he is mining through the majority of his gold, and he loses all the knights there. Really could use a lot more pikemen right now. Still army right now for El Cid. Four crossbows and seven camels. Yikes. That's, that's definitely not what he's looking for. But can breathe a little bit for now in the middle of his base, is back on 30 active farmers, which he wasn't at moments ago. 
And, uh, well, here we go. We've got a Ram push from Subutai against the TC. Crazy. That, that TC is going to be a goner, most likely. Villagers repairing away, which is hilarious. It's a smart move. You just don't see it from all these all, all the players out there. Crossbow and Camel. 17 Vils in Q right now for Subutai. 17. And Villagers exposed everywhere. Big fight here. Let's we'll see if Elstead can focus down the pikes here. Feels like he did focus down a lot of the pikes in the group. Most of the pikes have gone down. El Cid loses the TC. However, El Cid is clearing the army? Question mark? There's a random treb over here. The villagers are trying to protect their home. There's a lot of weak knights there. They're just like moments away from going down. Okay. Crossbows with chemistry are actually helping a lot here. And... 85 pop for El Cid. He's now behind by 30 vils. Still in imp. Oh, and he's being pushed over here, too. Oh, my God. This is insane. So this is not something that it, that El Cid picked up on right away. Or maybe he did. He was garrisoned. Tigui! Tigui, it's so smart. You need the arrows, man. You need the arrows. And we've got imp for Subutai. But Subutai... Has, like, no gold income. Okay, Subutai's gonna find that gold. What in the world, man? This is a crazy game. Okay, we don't know who these players are. This is a Hidden Cup show match to give you a feel for the main event and what the main event will bring. Obviously, in the main event, we'll have the world's best players. These guys are, are, are up there with them, but they weren't able to qualify. I, I, it's honestly been a brilliant game. Like, El Cid should have died. Subatai should have died. Both players have put up excellent fight here. And, um, you know, I, I have to give both a lot of credit for that. Like, I know El Cid, it's been messier for him, but it's because he's been against all this pressure constantly. And he loses TCs, and he's just right back to it. Like, he is up to 44 on food now, which was such a big issue for him. He had, like, two on food before. And... He's got some, some army here. He still has Trebs to push this castle. And this gold is critical. And this is maybe the most important moment of the match. Now, this right-hand side is still kind of being pressured. You don't want to put any focus on that right now if you're El Cid. You just focus all of your attention right here. He's actually mixing in some hand cannons now. Hand cannon camel is really good against what we are seeing from Subutai. Subutai going to snag a relic now. And maybe could snag this one eventually as taking some stone in the middle. But Subutai is just repairing this castle now. And that's a lot of stone to invest into repairing a castle. Remember, Subutai lost two castles already. So it could be a situation where Subutai doesn't really have castles. I think El Cid sees this monk and wants to kill it. So it's bringing all the camels to do that. We'll kill that monk, which is a good move. Monk will die, but now, of course, the camels aren't here, and there's an opportunity now for Subutai to go kill those trebs, maybe. Subutai actually choosing to send these knights into the eco again. And now there's camels in the eco, too, so pikes are needed in defense. This is crazy. Cavalier upgrade on the way. No heavy camel upgrade for El Cid this entire time he's been an imp. He just doesn't have the gold. He does not have the gold access to be able to do that. And he's hoping that will change if he can take this castle out. This gold's still an issue. Like, he's just now taking the gold. And like, Subutai will not rest with his focus on these sides. It's incredible. But I, I just... I think Cavalier also could be really bad <laughs> against Camel. I guess you get the extra melee armor as Tutans, and it will be Cavalier with armor against Heavy Camel. Or, sorry. Uh... Well, light camels, I guess. Regular camel riders. Now two minutes away from heavy camel is El Cid. And El Cid knows. I need to keep an eye on this. But, I mean, it feels like Subutai. I mean, he has the eco lead now. He's building up towards a big fight here. And I think El Cid realizes that he's going to lose his trebs if he stays there. It feels like... Subutai might actually be able to overrun. If he can just get a couple Cavalier into the back of this eco... Wow, El Cid knows he's exposed there. That is so good, man. To have that game sense, but... Still, I mean, there's a lot of economy exposed everywhere for El Cid at the moment. 
Gold will be available for El Cid, though, on this right side. Heavy Camel will be in. I also love how Subutai is actually really exposed at home. The best form of defense for him here is offense. And there he goes for the Cavalier. So the castle is obviously critical to control that area. But Halb Cavalier is tricky. If you bring the Camels anywhere close to this, it's a bit like what we had seen in the Castle Age with Pikeman Knight. The Camels have to be really careful. And so this just means El Cid needs more range units. I think Hand Cannon is kind of the play there. But you lack mobility with Hand Cannon, and it does cost gold. I wonder if, if a castle here eventually for El Cid would make sense. Because you know that Subutai is going to come back there. And here come the Camels. Cavalier are so slow with Teutons. And the Cavalier need to get away now. Yep. Nice work there from El Cid not to lose those range units. Nice work from Subutai, though, to just split up some halves into the eco. Hmm. Eventually, El Cid will get to a comp that I don't think Subutai can kill easily. But right now, Subutai is, is a big moment because the numbers aren't there for El Cid. There's a castle going up on the right. We know why this happened, right? We already explained it. You need the gold. And then this area is actually protected. So you can focus on the main fight. So it will be three castles for El Cid. More hand cannons still being created, but being created from ranges that are surrounded is so messy. Trebs are being massed right now from Subutai. Murder holes on the way! You never see pros get murder holes, but in this show match, we'll see everything, man. Who are these players? And oh, Subutai knows that El Cid is on the right. That El Cid is playing defense. And so he is going to shift to this left-hand side to treb this down. I love the patience from Subutai! Crazy patience, man! To wait for this, to show up with multiple trebs. I'm preaching it all the time in my cast. Do not show up with one. Show up with at least three. And then your opponent has to react to you right away, or they're going to lose that castle. This castle will likely go down. I do not think El Cid can get enough army to deal with this right now. It's just been such a big problem for El Cid to keep this eco protected. Nine hours and 20 seconds of idle eco for El Cid in this game. I mean, Subutai's total idle eco count is also pretty high, to be honest, for a one-hour game. But El Cid's lost 130 bills. Like I said, I think this army type is actually superior right now for El Cid, but it's the numbers that's the issue. That is just a lot of Cavalier. We have crenellations on the way from Subutai. Adding some pretty ridiculous range onto the castles for the Teutons. There is only one castle, though. So I'm not sure about that one. Still not the cheapest upgrade ever, but players want to max out with whatever they can. Look at this micro from El Cid. Beautiful micro. Good patience with the camels. He really needs to keep this castle up if he can. Big fight. There's only six halbs in there, guys. More are going to join. But it seems like El Cid is winning the fight. What is this game? And Murder Holes keeps the repair villagers alive over here. He actually ran out of stone to repair. El Cid is completely at the limit with resources. He needs to keep this castle up. He'll lose it. But maybe he could take the trebs? I don't know. Subutai is two relics. Subutai is most of the map control right now. Subutai also is mining some of this gold, which should have been El Cid's. And we now see rangers and barracks behind this from Subutai. And he's able to save those trebs. Right now, El Cid's composition is at its peak. Maybe El Cid needs to finally get some raids in. Like, like right, right, right here is such a good area to get some light cap, for example. I think it's just so tough to do that when you're in the dark and when you have your opponent all over you all the time. But the Farimba upgrade... And then Lycav could be amazing in this eco. There's just villagers exposed everywhere. But I don't think that he's going to be given the time. Even the Ironclad and Siege Engineers coming in for Subutai. So extra melee armor on the Trebs. Extra range on the Trebs. Teutons only get scouts, so it's kind of funny to see a scout raid in Imp. They are fully upgraded scouts, though, so it is something. And Subutai, as the score is just flip-flopping back and forth, is going to try and push this castle next. See what I mean? You just don't have time to raid. But yes, you do! 
Of course, there's Halbs here from Subutai, though. He saw it coming. Villagers are still getting sniped. Trebs are over here. This is ridiculous, man. Scouts are going to town. This is a crazy game. Lightcav are also looking for areas for attack. If they could find that, 10 villagers will die. Zubatai up 2-0 in this show match. The first two games were wacky. This game has been insanely aggressive. And it, even he has been raiding in different areas. And here he hasn't noticed this. But guys, his army count's insane. And his three trebs are likely going to take out this castle from El Cid. There's three relics for Subatai. So he is able to get that gold income. His resources are looking incredible here. And it seems like El Cid is about to be broken here. And now he only has one castle. So there's only one castle for each player. I think they've used the rest of the stone on the map. Like they've each had like maybe four or five castles throughout the game. But they've just both lost so many of them. This is an amazing find. But the problem now for El Cid is there's going to be a hundred army for Subatai. And we might even see the Paladin upgrade here for Subutai. He certainly seems to be saving resources for something. I mean, Teuton Skirms aren't that exciting, so that's not the type of army to worry you that much. The Halves and the Cav is really the, the, main, the main strength of this army. Oh, man. There's still... I mean, there's still lots of blinking from the raids. Nice job from El Cid. He's taken his opponent down to 100 vils. That's maybe his way back into the game. But his eco is so exposed as well, isn't it? Bit of patience here from Subutai. Light Cav still working, moving around. One of them was moonwalking. Shout out to that one. Subutai shifting positions, interestingly enough, to go to this eco, so not going for this castle. We do have El Cid struggling for wood at this point. No Paladin upgrade. No gold income beyond the relics now for Subutai. Completely out of gold. And that is the same for El Cid. The only gold left on the map is maybe that gold right there. 160 gold. Um, we never saw the Farimba upgrade, which is quite sad for the Malian player. That could be really helpful with the extra attack. But sadly can't afford it right now. Gold mining upgrade coming in for a player with no access to gold. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> He's probably like, oh, I need gold. I need to get my gold upgrades. And doesn't realize he doesn't have any villagers on gold obviously not worth it but maybe there's well if he gets to this gold it's going to come in really fast and like have I've really done a lot of damage here El Cid's fight man has been incredible I, I, I think I know who this player is I'm pretty certain I know who El Cid is uh, El Cid is here this fight is crazy. Lightcap continuing to find kills. How is El Cid not finished yet? How is this still a game? El Cid has the villager lead, guys. And the cavalier count is not that impressive anymore for Subutai. It's only 14. The halves are getting killed by these hand cannons. There are random blue units everywhere. There are outposts everywhere. Like, Subutai can see most of the map. And is slowly trebbing down some of this eco. It's like right in the heart of his opponent's eco, honestly. You cannot lose this bomber cannon right now if you're El Cid. That would be an expensive loss. And actually, he's going to lose it. But he killed a lot of gold units in the process of, of trying to save it. So maybe that's a positive. But his population is not looking good. The farming eco here will be found. Any eco elsewhere is exposed. We've got Tootin scouts finding kills. It, there, we have the occasional counter raid, but the GG is called. And it is a 3-0 lead for Subutai here in this show match. That game was phenomenal. Crazy pressure from Subutai, who at one point was like 40 or 50 villagers behind. But just continuous pressure. Castle drops and raids on the sides. It just never stopped here for Subutai. And poor El Cid is probably like, man. Like, I don't know who I'm up against here, but it's certainly going to be tough for me to beat this guy today. So, game one and game number two, lots of monk pressure from Subutai. Game number three, very capable with the all-in aggression there with the with the Teutons of all civs. We'll see what El Cid does next, but, uh, you know, I'm hoping we obviously get more games from this show match. But eventually, you guys are going to have to guess who you think these players are, so think on that.
There's the res collected, 99 resources collected there from Subit or 99,000 resources collected from Subitai, who just did such a great job with Eco behind that the entire time. That was impressive. Looks like they're similar speed, if that means anything to you. But uh, let's get on the LSID hype train right now so we can get more games from these two, because these games have been so unique, man. So here we go. We've got Subitai 3-0 up here in this show match, playing as the Malay in the blue. And then in the red, we've got El Cid playing as the Bohemians. This map is called Hidden Forts. Uh, some people have called it the Bat Map. Uh, we are not trying to signal you Batman, but you are welcome to watch the main event of Hidden Cup 5 if you would so wish. February 25th through March 3rd. So the way this map works is there is big incentive to be in the middle. And if you would like to be in the middle, you just need to chop through there. Um... So as you can see, players build a lumber camp here, chop two trees, and suddenly they're in. And when they're in the middle, there are rhinos for them to snag and bring them in towards their TC. And there's also gold there. The problem with being in the middle is, well, the opponent knows exactly where to find you. <laughs> uh, and it actually can be kind of problematic if you're stuck in the middle and you, have, you then lose the outside, uh, which we saw in the game yesterday that the player who took the middle then lost the outside. So the middle obviously gives you some benefit, but then if you're lacking the outside, you could be in a worse position. So it is very interesting. And we are going to see El Cid build a lumber camp. And clearly the plan here for El Cid is to chop through to the middle. Now, there is a small thing. Like if you really want good chances at taking the rhinos. Now, these guys aren't training for the main event, so they probably don't know this. But if you want the best chance of finding rhinos, going to this type of area, I don't know how to describe this, like the, the edge, uh, the corner, this is actually bad because it's less likely there's going to be rhinos around to populate. Whereas like if you go to the, the middle area, it's more likely you can find multiple. But look at Subitai here. Subitai has built a lumber camp, which was not designed to get through to the middle quickly. This is an intentional move. This leads to more efficiency with your eco. Uh, but this does not help you get access to the rhinos. So my feeling is civilizations that'll be really strong on this map will be civs like Malay. Uh, Bohemians actually are top tier. I, I really wouldn't mind. A civ like Mongols, I think, could be picked here with all the hunt. I mean, there's even hunt on the outside you can take. You can't say no to Mongols. I think Poles are actually top tier here. You can just give up the middle, play to the sides, farm away. You have plenty of resources. Poles have a great late game. So it should be good. Otto says this map looks unbalanced. Okay, Otto, tell me what your feedback is. What tweaks should we make? What what is what is unbalanced about it? We have a villager coming here from Subatai. Ooh. Sneak villager walking around. And that villager. I mean, you know the opponent's berries and gold are usually a bit more to the outer side. That's something that's somewhat fixed. It's it's never, like, in this little nook. It's always towards the side. Someone says if both players short wall, blue gets more res. Otto, you're, you're, the game has to be played, my friend. You, you mean short wall like this? That's That's way too much walling. I appreciate your your insights, but it is it really, and I'm not saying the map is perfect by any means, but I'd be shocked if players full wall this because of the amount of aggression that can come through in feudal age. So these villagers, interesting. They're still. We'll see if they've been shift queued, but they should eventually make it to this tree. And Subatai is building a forward barracks, making militia, and El Cid saw the house. Interesting. So meanwhile, behind this, we're just going to have food income from Subitai. But El Cid's got to be like, are you freaking kidding me? Why does this guy keep trying to ruin my normal games? <laughs> so you got to you gotta respect Subitai, dude. <laughs> Subitai, <laughs> Subitai has really just decided he is going to make it as chaotic as possible. He, and is no chill. But it's fun, right? Because we have the outside approach against the chop to the middle approach here. 
El Cid is hoping to take the middle, and Subutai doesn't really seem to care about that right now. Right now, it feels like the militia not going to break through. Nice job from El Cid. And El Cid's on the way to Feudal Age here. So these militia might not end up paying off. And then Subutai might be, in some ways, regretting making this military. But I think this is still really good. Because you can still attack houses, you can still disrupt the opponent. Hmm. T90 Twitch chatters need to be rebalanced before the main event, please. Nah, I mean, it's it's a little unfair of me, maybe, to, to like, call someone out in front of 7,000 people to say, prove your point. But if you say that there's, you know, an imbalance, I, I, I want to hear people's thoughts. I think it's, you know, it's really easy to have a thought and just make a judgment call based on looking at something without thinking about how the, the gameplay is going to play out, so... So, you know what would be fascinating here is if the archer follow-up doesn't even happen out here. Wouldn't that be so sick? Like, maybe you could go archers right to the middle because you're thinking El Cid's going to be through. Could see it, maybe. Hmm. Militia and Scout haven't killed anything, but they've disrupted El Cid a little bit. And lay advance faster to the next stage, and they'll always have a villager lead because of that. So spending less time researching the next stage adds up. The Outer Woods being taken, too. This wood has 150 per tree. Which is very nice. Just passing there from El Cid. So the wood efficiency should be much better for Subutai. And El Cid maybe picked Bohemians thinking this could be good for the late game. And is going to go into Archers and Skirms here. Hmm. So Subutai is going to aim to wall this area up. To keep that blocked off. That's interesting. And then isn't actually going for an archery range. Isn't going for any army whatsoever. Okay, did was someone trying to take... Okay, is El Cid's going to try and take his rhino. There he goes. Now, guys, you see this rock terrain behind the wood line? You can't wall there, so you can't wall the opponent off. So I'm kind of interested to see what El Cid's trying to do here with this villager. So there's going to be the Rhino. That's a lot of food income. Archers are in defense here as well for El Cid. Hmm. Um. Well, he checked the lumber camp, right? So he knows that's where the chop through is coming. Is he going to tower it, maybe? Because you can't wall behind. So we, we had a lot of test versions of this to eventually get to the finished product. And... Walling behind was really strong, which is why we added the rock terrain. Archers still have to micro here. Really nice shot from El Cid with the idle TC, or lack thereof. Market from Subutai. Yeah, Subutai's just planning for Castle Age. I mean, it'd be pretty wild if El Cid would, like, bring an archer here. There's a villager going for another rhino. Let's see if... I mean, good luck paying attention to this when you're paying attention to everything else. But okay, that's happening. Good stuff. Archer's still chasing down the militia. Dude, if this villager builds a, builds a palisade immediately right there, after this tree gets chopped, I'm going to lose my mind. There's a rhino coming in at the same time. I bet you Subutai builds his own palisade. Okay, the villagers just come right through. Yeah, so I, I, I wasn't really sure what else Sid was trying to accomplish there. But now... Subutai's made the cut through and drops an archery range. But here come the range units from El Cid, which maybe spent a little bit too much time chasing this. I don't know. Can you theoretically mule cart block? I think you could, yeah. And mule carts, you can take gold, and you could also take hunt, so I think mule cart civs could be strong here. Obviously, this is only the second game I've ever casted on this map, but what do you guys think? It's okay. If you don't like it, it's all good, but if you had to give it a ranking out of 10, what are your thoughts? I think it's going to produce some really interesting games. It's basically fortified clearing with extra steps. If you know fortified clearing. I think there's a lot of different variety you could go for. 7 out of 10. I'm seeing a lot of 7s. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Where you get worried is if it's like a 2. You know? I'm not seeing many 2s. <laughs> Look at Subutai's uptime. Subutai's going to be up. But Subutai has to be careful here. Because archers are here. I wonder if this archery range gets walled in, actually. Hmm, could, in theory, attack this palisade wall, and then, once it's down, build a stone wall there? 
Feels like this game will probably go late. Subutai did sell all stone. So I think Subutai really wants to pressure towards the middle here. We'll have Skirms out of the range. Skirms are here. And now Skirms could kill off the uh, archers and the spear. And now Subutai deletes the wall. And Subutai is running directly to the middle right now. Hmm. Ooh, man. Micro matters a lot here. Okay, Monastery. Elsid is like, no, not again. Not again. <laughs> not again. <laughs> Please, no monks. <laughs> I don't want to see any monks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor Elsid. <laughs> oh, man. The Skirms are getting their kills. The Skirms are probably going to die. And first monk is on the way. But I mean, there's no spears here. Because the barracks is over here. So right now, Subutai is making an extra barracks just to protect the monks. I I'm not sure this position is really that good right now for Subutai. Nice quick walling there. Beautiful play. But this is certainly not the push that he was hoping for. So, obviously, big benefit to have that initial push, but now it just gets more awkward in the middle. Yeah, I just love that. I love how, like, an advantage on the side means you have a disadvantage towards the middle. And El Cid's going to drop a siege workshop and also drop a monastery. Cav Archer? Interesting addition there. And now the monk is going to die, but converts an archer first. Okay. Villager goes down. Next monk comes out. That monk should die as well to these scouts. Archer should do it. Archer. Kill it. Kills it. This is really micro-intensive stuff right now. This is not easy. Especially when you know that tons of people are watching. Um, I mean, spears have the extra armor for the melee. The ecos looked really good for Subutai, at least on paper with the 12 on food. The eco right now for El Cid is not the best. El Cid selling his stone. He's like, okay, this is going to be a full clown game. I don't, We won't boom at all. Another monk exposed. Another monk will die. Sick micro from El Cid against these monks. My problem for El Cid is I'm still not sure what army comp he's actually committed towards here. I guess it's going to be monks in siege, right? Yeah, it's going to be monks in siege. But he hasn't, he doesn't really made many of them. He's killed a lot, though. Really good stuff. Wow, this has become... So both players have decided it is middle or death, basically. Really aggressive. That monk will fail to convert an archer. Over here, a villager did die. One to one on the eco KD. And we have redemption now for Subutai, who has shown that he is in love with monk play. So we've got 17 on gold for both. Hold on, folks. The militia and the scout are through. Redemption could help with converting siege. Scouts go in. Scouts kill the monk. Oh, that's huge. That is a really nice find. Now there's no monks for Subutai to be able to convert the siege anymore. And El Cid is starting to do a pretty good job here. Obviously, atonement would make a lot of sense to convert enemy monks. Villagers on this wood line that have chopped a hole. Like, the siege could roll right through. They're getting pushed back. And can El Cid finally get a win here against whoever this pesky, pesky player is in Subutai? God, I mean, this distraction is going to be so annoying. Still feels like you know, the archers are offering enough protection in some ways. Uh, for any monks that might hop out of this monastery. But but not this one. Not this one. And if that siege gets converted, then all of the archers could go down and the siege is converted and a monk goes down. Disaster again here. I think for El Cid. Now there's still the militia fighting, which is a pain. And the siege could, could actually be kept alive. And archers could maybe be converted. And oh god, what a mess. What a mess, dude. El Cid has just not been able to play his game because Subutai just is made it so scrappy and so messy. And when you're down 3-0, you probably are considering calling the GG. Like, you have 100 bucks to just playing today. Sometimes it takes a lot of will to fight to continue to call back in these situations. 
But my guess is that El Cid is someone with a lot of fight. I, I, if I had to guess right now, I would say this is Capoch. Um, and Capoch is not going to want to give up easily here. Now, Capoch is just not known for really being good in monk situations, though. Like, I think going for Atonement would have been such a good play, which he's going to do now. Sanctity could have helped a long time ago, which he never did. You know, the timings has not been great. He kills his own siege, and then he deletes his siege, and he deletes his siege workshop here. But the power of the monks from Subutai just continues to snowball here up against poor El Cid. And it, I mean, the monasteries were there for El Cid. He had the amount on gold. I just don't think he's been able to control it as comfortably. Some players, they're just, they're just better at it. And more monasteries now from El Cid. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, Atonement did complete for El Cid. Did Subutai get it? I don't know if Subutai got it yet. Atonement Wars can snowball pretty quickly. Oh, he did get it. Okay. Okay. That's good for El Cid. I, guys, I have no clue what to say at the moment. I'm so sorry. This is... <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> we have red monks becoming blue monks. We have blue monks becoming red monks. And we have archers who are very confused. There's a lot of whoa, whoa noises, and um, a lot of arena players are very satisfied. They feel very at home right now. Um, Siege is here. Uh, El Cid has accidentally clicked a Rhino, so now we have Rhino attacking archers. So that's <laughs> that's just one more bad thing on the list of things to have happened to El Cid today. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I mean, this wave of monks just continues. The problem right now for El Cid is he's he's focused and he's bringing monks forward from these other monasteries. And those monks are just switching sides here. These monks are just going rogue. And he just continues to build more siege workshops and more monasteries. <laughs> but he's not getting conversions. It's 13 monks for Subutai. It is just three for El Cid. <laughs> and El Cid is... I mean, if he completes this, he's going to have eight monasteries. But only three of them are actually good to produce from because his opponent's going to be coming through. Maybe none of them will be good to produce from because Subutai is going to build a castle. I'm pretty sure he bought this castle. I don't even think he mined the stone for this. I think he bought this. I, I don't know how he got the stone. Uh, anyways, there goes the castle. And, uh, you know, I talked about the map and how the inside can be in helpful helpful and the outside can be helpful and there's all these different things you can talk about this map both players prioritize the middle Subutai is so clearly so good with monks and El Cid maybe lose uh, lost faith after the previous game in all honesty and the GG's are called and that is the last series before Hidden Cup 5 main event we have to find out who these players are um, Subutai made a lot of monks in this series. El Cid, clearly not a player who likes the monks. The two very different style players, but Subutai got the job done. It was so interesting. It was like the rush on the outside into the middle control. It was so fascinating. I wonder if El Cid, he spent some time chasing the militia. Um... So, like, I can understand why you want to deal with these militia, but I wonder if in this moment, if you just ignore the militia and have the archers here, how much this changes. I think it could have changed a lot to have the um, archers here, and then maybe the range never comes up, the skirms never come out. I mean, of course, there could be a range here, but... Hmm. Very interesting. All right. So, I'm seeing some questions. I'm seeing some questions that make it clear to me that some people are slightly confused on how this all went down today. So let's just reiterate some things. This show match featured players that are not playing in the main event. All right? Not playing in the main event. This show match featured players who lost in the qualifier to give us a taste, to give us a feel for what Hidden Cup is like. And the possible players for this series are shown there. Now, we did have Daniel and Margugu playing yesterday. I was told that it's possible that Daniel and Margugu also played today. But I... Would be a little annoyed at Robo, honestly, if he chose to repeat players. So I think that's a mind game from Robo, and I think it is probably not Daniel and Margugu. Now, what we're going to do, 
And we're going to do this in the main event of Hidden Cup after every series as well. But we're going to go to the audience now and we are going to vote, uh, find out who you guys think these players are. We're going to start with El Cid, okay? So El Cid first. And we can start that poll now. So you're able to vote by typing a number. And the last number that you type is the number that is entered. So if you type 1, for example, for Capwatch, and then type 10 for Valus and change your name or change your vote, it will remove your first vote and take you to the next. Now I'd like to reiterate that there's an amazing prize for whoever gets this right today, and that is the satisfaction of being right. And I'm sure everyone is really excited about that. So please be hyped. The satisfaction of being right is what you could potentially win here. Um, but yes, who is El Cid? Who is the player who unfortunately lost this show match? I'm going to give you three I think it could be. I'm going to give you my top three. I think Capoch is number one. Um, and then Capoch is number two, and then Capoch is number three. That's my top three. <laughs> 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 that's that's my top three for you. Cat watch, cat watch, cat watch. <laughs> uh, we'll see what the community thinks, though. I think, like, Kingston or Fire, uh, pretty reasonable guesses as well. I, I would be surprised if it was Kingston, because Kingston is pretty good on arena-style strats. So, like, the Monks, I think, he maybe would be a little bit more accustomed to. Someone says, felt like Capwatch would have made for a closer series. That's a fair point. Capwatch generally puts up a big fight. This is what the community thinks. So, how did we do this yesterday? Did we do the vote for the next one first before we revealed anything the player said? I actually forget. Capwatch, 31%. Kingston, 13%. Fire, 12%. Yeah, okay. So, let's, let's now get a vote for who the winner of our show match was. Subatai, please. Now, this one, I think, is is trickier than people are making it seem. I think this one has three really probable options. Um, I think Freaking Andy is my top vote. I see a lot of people saying that. But I also think uh, Dark could be a genuine dark horse with this player. He is really good with Monks, and he's really good with Annoying Plays. I think he's an underrated player, too. So I, I think maybe Dark... The other one for me that comes up is Valas. Um, Valeza would surprise me. Vivi would surprise me because of how um, they played Arabia. But, you know, beyond that, I don't know. We'll see. Vote away, people. Vote away. Next, what we're going to find out is who the players thought they played which will be interesting. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Holy crap. Holy... I mean, I'll get to this here in a second, but thank, thank you, everybody. I got a long list of names to go through. This is freaking fun, man. Isn't this fun? This is so fun. I'm so excited for Hidden Cup. Oh, my God. The games are, I mean, probably going to be a bit more competitive than this show match here. I mean, one would hope, of course. And, uh, yeah, the, everything is going to be so much better than these show matches have, have, have uh, brought us, so... All right, so what's the community think? Final tally is... Seems like freaking Andy at 41%. Valis at 16%. Dark at 12%. Are you guys being... Are you guys stealing that from me? Or you genuinely think it was dark? I'm curious on that. Anyways. Um, all right, so let's find out now who the players thought they played. Okay, so Subatai guessed they were playing against Capoch. And El Cid guessed they were playing against freaking Andy. <laughs> so the players agreed with the top votes from the fans here. Both players seem to think what everybody else thought. Which means I, I'm feeling pretty good about the guesses right now. Robo's going to tell us. Would be interesting if it wasn't one of those players. 
I feel I feel like it is, dude. It, it felt so much like freaking Andy. Oh, oh my God, guys! They were both wrong. They were both wrong. Now I know it's just a show match, but this all. Oh yeah, the players always know. The players always know. It's honestly so easy. You just gotta look at the servers. Honestly, you just you know you look at some players, monk. Some players that the players always know. Subutai was Valis. Yep. Subutai was Valis. And Elisid was Kingston. It was not freaking Andy. It was not Capoch. It was Valis against Kingston in that show match. Kingston got 4 0 by Valis. What an excellent show match. No, not Sean Kingston. No, no beautiful girls here. Um, wow. Crazy. And again, we thought, I forget what the results were for um for for El Cid. I thought like maybe it was Kingston. Like there were some like maybes for me, but it very much felt like cat punch to me. And then Valis doesn't normally play so extreme with some of his monks, and maybe thought it would be freaking Andy because of it. MBL in chat says I knew it wasn't cat punch. Well, MBL would know who is and isn't cat punch more than anyone else. So maybe we should have asked MBL, but that was fun, man. That was fun. So salutes to uh, to Vallis and for Kingston. I love the fact that they guessed what we guessed. I thought that was amazing. They both played amazing. The games were great. Obviously would have loved to have more games here, um, but it is what it is. And um, this, uh, this show match again was to give you guys a taste of how the main event is going to work on Hidden Cup, which starts in a week. It's an eight-day event. We've got a 50k prize starting prize pool. It's it's likely to climb. Um, we'll have the best players in the world. We will have so many things throughout each day to make it worth your while to show up and be here. Here's the reminder. Here's the main event players. Those are the 16 names we'll have in the main event. The players don't know who they're up against. The fans, of course, don't know who's who. I am included in this. ACCM, Doubt, Hera, Jordan, Leary, Yo. The Viper, Vinchester, Sito, MBL, Tato, Barles, Sebastian, Ganji, Mihai, and Hart. And then the heroes, guys. Some epic, epic heroes. From Alexios all the way down to Alfred the Alpaca on the left. From good old uh, Sicilian dungeon rusher himself, you pudding, or excuse me, Ro uh, Robert which I believe is Robert, Robert, Guzcard, and then also Emperor Sigismund. We've got some big names on there, which will be in the main event. Every one of those main event players has one of those names. And it should be awesome. Now, a um, couple things I need to mention about this. Um, just to remind everybody, we have a live viewing party in the U.S. The tickets are on sale until the main event starts on the 25th of February. So if you would like to be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, watch the whole final day, third place match, the grand final, the big reveal. Um, buy tickets. Buy tickets. We've got a Discord if you have any questions about it. Uh, more and more tickets are being sold. That should be awesome. I will be there as well. You get to meet me at the conclusion of the day. Um, also, starting on the first day, I'm trying to put as much information out, the, uh, out there as possible about this. So when we start the day on February 25th, the prediction contest closes which means you have a week to try and submit your bracket if you're interested in that. You go to hiddencup.com, there's a predictions tab, and you can predict your bracket. Um, this is obviously not going to happen when the main event spoils results, right? So you can just, it's just a fun little thing if you want to be involved to try and predict how the matches go. So predict your bracket, please. Uh, and, you know... See how it goes. Um, I haven't done mine yet. I'm not going to do it. I probably won't do it on stream. I think I will just do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about other things. I can do it later. Um, 